May 27, 1949, down Shanghai's princely avenues, the pleasure boulevards of yesteryear, rolls the victorious red tide. In six more months, all China will submit. Red Star triumphant, hoisted over the world's most ancient nation. Silently, the crowds observe their newest conquerors. Today, in 1967, the marble altars of Peking still beseech the will of heaven as always. Chinese still gather here to listen to the voices that interpret heaven's will. <laughs> For 18 years, this man alone has tried to shape their thinking, has offered them his universal truths, a dogma changeless as Confucius, to freeze their muffled discontent and end their quenchless modern turbulence. The image shown his people has been a teacher, grandfather benign, yet all have learned that those who cannot read his lessons will be crushed. His aging mind still lusts for permanent strife. The theme he preaches to old and young alike is hate. We are small militia men fighting U.S. imperialism. Uncle, we must grow up quick and go to liberate Taiwan. Taiwan, the object of their hate, we call Formosa. This rocky island, 90 miles off the mainland, has many meanings. To statesmen, it is the last remaining redoubt of the Guomindang, where Chiang Kai-shek with American arms has re-equipped an army 600,000 strong and dreams reconquest. But Chiang is pawn to American policy. He cannot move these troops or fuel them unless America lets him do so.